I take it you're familiar with the term book on tape, although these are more commonly referred to nowadays as audio books. However, if we stick with the tape era, I just want to show you a simple but ingenious spin on this idea from the 1980s by a company called Brilliance Corporation. So this is their book cassette, and it all looks rather normal. And for comparison, here's a standard audio book on tape. Now, this normal audio book, well, that contains an unabridged reading of Murder on the Orient Express. It runs for six hours and 30 minutes, and it's spread across a total of six cassettes. Now, compare that to the book cassette. This, again, is unabridged. It contains the novel of The Eye of the Needle. This one has a longer running time of nine hours, and yet it comes on just three cassettes. So, how is that possible? Well, I think the quickest way is to show you, or more accurately, let you have a listen to it, and then you'll immediately understand. And Henry Faber. Part two. Cycling from Waterloo Station Chapter toward seven. Highgate. Noted them. The message Piles annoyed Faber because it forced him to face issues that he had been avoiding. Anderson shelters in suburban Hamburg gardens. had made Propaganda damn sure the message about reached evacuation. Yes, to fit twice the amount of audio on a tape, the book cassette uses the left and right stereo channels for different tracks. The idea was you'd select the track you wanted to listen to by adjusting your balance control. In fact, I'll let the tape explain it. This is a book cassette tape. It must be listened to on a stereo tape player. You should adjust your balance control to the full left position so the tone in the right speaker cannot be heard. Now that information comes from the start of side A, so you'd start off by listening to the left channel for side A and B, and then you'd switch over to the right channel, and then you'd listen to side A and B again, which gives you double the normal playing time for each cassette. Faber passed a farmer ploughing a field with a the tractor. There was no way to avoid being seen. Another wave crashed on the cabin, shattering the glass in the windows, and suddenly Faber was underwater. This is the end of this cassette. This book is continued on cassette number two. You should adjust your balance control to the full left position and continue listening on part A of cassette number two. Of course, there are some rather obvious disadvantages. If your stereo speakers are spaced far apart, this could all sound rather lopsided. And then there's the other issue that you can't use these audiobooks on a mono tape player. But as you can see on the box, they are suggesting that you can play your audiobooks in various locations away from home. So how would that work? After all, a cassette Walkman doesn't usually have a balance control. You've just got the one volume dial or slider that controls both channels at once. In fact, the only one of my Walkmans that allows separate adjustment of the left and right channels is the original model. But that feature was dropped very quickly in subsequent models. Well, I suppose at a pinch, one way to listen to these tapes would be to wear one earbud and then swap it out for the other one at the appropriate time, but that would provide a less than ideal experience. Hence, they also sold the book cassette adapter for $4.99. Now, after much hunting, I managed to find a sealed one of these, so let's see how this works. Well, inside, it's just a small adapter that comes with some instructions and a catalogue of book cassette titles. We'll take a look at that in a minute but first let's just get back to this adapter now i'll admit i was expecting something a little bit more sophisticated perhaps with a switch on it but this is just a simple three and a half millimeter male to dual female adapter but let's give it a go up and walked gingerly down the steep narrow ramp the small discomfort of the weather taking her mind off the larger hurt inside her he increased his pace, jogging 20 yards, walking the next 20, and jogging again. Of course it works, and it also sends that mono audio out over both the channels. Now, I know it's an incredibly simple and basic idea, but it does make sense, especially when it comes to travelling with an audio book. So you stick a cassette in your pocket, you've got one in the machine, and then you've got three hours worth of audio. It looks like it was quite a successful idea, too. In this catalogue, it mentions there were over 350 titles available at this point. I'd imagine book cassettes would be quite a bit cheaper than their rivals due to having to use only half the amount of tapes. However, looking through this catalogue, it does show the prices of some of the longer running titles still really do get up there. Now, I don't know if the book cassette ever left North America. It certainly didn't manage to take over the whole market. This book cassette is copyright 1986, but my UK title on normal tapes, well, that's from 92. Perhaps there were too many barriers for the book cassette system to gain wide acceptance. After all, whenever you're adding complexity to something that people are already familiar with, then you're up against both inertia and familiarity. Of course, nowadays things are a lot simpler. 
Audible has pretty much got this whole audio book market sewn up to themselves. I'm sure you're aware that Audible was bought by Amazon back in 2008. But what happened to Brilliance Corporation, the company behind the book cassette? Well, funnily enough, they were also bought by Amazon the year before Amazon acquired Audible. So many of the recordings that were made for the book cassettes will live on buried in amongst the catalogue of titles on Audible. And no, this video is not sponsored by Audible. But of course, nowadays you can listen to all those old recordings over your normal headphones without having to remember to bring that special adapter dongle along with you. Oh yeah, forgot about that. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.